Okay, I'm gonna go for 100% hand raise. How many people have heard of Mirador? <laughs> All right. Um, great. So I, I think my challenge uh, for this afternoon is to show you something new. Um, so if you watch carefully, I think there's at least one thing you haven't seen in the previous uh, screenshots and demonstrations of Mirador. My name is Stuart Snydman from the Stanford University Libraries. Um, and I'm here with my friend Tom Crane to talk about uh, the viewers that bring IIIF uh, compatible image resources to life on screen. Um, so I'll talk for a few minutes about Mirador and then hand it over to Tom who's going to talk about uh, the Universal Viewer, both of which you've heard quite a bit about today. Um, but it's important to note at this stage, um, as others have, that most of the image viewers that you're familiar with, that you already have built into your environments, um, are already IIIF compatible. Um, so this is, uh, this is really a striking indicator of how far IIIF has come over the past four years. Um, and in particular, the investment that's been made by the people in this room and others uh, in both open source and commercial software um, and, a commitment to, and their commitment to interoperability. Um, so it's a really exciting time. Um, it's also important to note that all the viewers are friends um, and we talk about um, building shared libraries and uh, we talk often um, in a very collaborative way. So uh, Mirador has been a project that's gone on for at least three years. Um, and as you've heard, it can operate at a couple of different uh, modalities. It can be a simple image viewer um, that you can embed into your discovery environment uh, for basic zoom and pan. But at the other extreme, you can use it as a complex researcher's workspace and um, do some rather extravagant things, um, as we saw earlier um, in, uh, in Jeff's presentation and, and others. Um, where it excels in particular is in comparison of images from disparate IIIF compatible uh, repositories as well as annotation um, to allow you to enhance a resource and support um, in-depth analysis that is often uh, collaborative. Um, it's important to note that uh, Mirador is a truly uh, community-driven open source project. Um, it's been, been led over the past few years by uh, developers Drew Winget from Stanford and Rashmi Singhal from Harvard, but right now there are no less than uh, six institutions, probably more, who are actively contributing to developing the next release of Mirador. And there are several others who have, have forked it and are using it for all kinds of interesting purposes. Um, so uh, this has been a really gratifying community experience as well. Um, and we find out about new adopters uh, uh, quite frequently, and it's been truly international. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into, I think, what will be a slightly more comprehensive demo of Mirador and its features. And again, look out for the new nuggets of, uh, of, of, of features that you haven't seen yet today that are uh, soon to come in Mirador 2.1. 2. Uh, 2. So um, when you are first, uh, oh, let's hit the play button. Okay, so when you first hit the introduce to a Mirador screen, you are presented with this long list of, um, of resources from a variety of different institutions. Um, this list can be configured. You can see in this list we have items from all over the world, the Internet Archive, Harvard, Stanford, Yale, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. I can filter that list to find the item that I want. And in this case, I see this beautiful um, 18th century um, etched fan that we digitized at Stanford uh, a year or so ago, and I get my basic uh, zoom and pan features that I, that I expect now to see, complements of Open Sea Dragon, which is baked into to Mirador. I can navigate a multi-image object uh, using a variety of controls, left-right controls, um, the film strip on the bottom, um, and I have a variety of other views. Uh, aside from my single image view, book view, which I'll show you in a minute, Scroll view allows you to pan right and left, left to right, um, to view all the images in sequence. Um, and I, of course, have a thumbnail gallery that I can use to generate thumbnails. Uh, and if I click them, I get back to my, my single image view. Um, there's, of course, an information button that allows you to see the metadata that is carried um, with the image via the presentation API. Um, it also includes uh, write statements. Um, and other descriptive information. 
uh, full screen buttons, and then importantly, and I'll reiterate this a few times, the ability to bookmark a state of Mirador so that you can share it um, with a colleague um, or a friend. Um, Mirador, of course, has a uh, set of modalities that are well suited to book viewing. So this is the famous Richardson 7 that, uh, from Harvard that, that, that Rob just showed. And I, if I go into book mode, um, I can look at and navigate the two-page spread, again, using the same sets of controls. Um, and I can zoom synchronously into both sides of the open spread. Um, I can navigate with my film strip. But this book in particular, again, via the presentation API, uh, some care has been taken to create the logical structure in the form of a table of contents. So Mirador has controls to reveal or conceal a table of contents, which is yet another mode of navigating, um, navigating the book. Um, so we've got uh, a variety of views optimized for uh, single images, multi-image objects, uh, and books. So what I want to focus on now is, I think, one of the most powerful features of Mirador that's been shown to you a few times today. We'll see it live. And this is the, the, the function of comparison, the ability to compare um, side by side or in more complex layouts, uh, items from the same or, or different repositories. So this is uh, a celestial map digitized at Stanford. Um, and I can kind of zoom in and show you the beautiful colors and the, and the, and the beautiful detail. Um, if I click on the icon in the upper left corner, uh, I see five options. One, to reload a new image into this workspace, or add a slot to the right, a slot to the left, uh, above or below. So I'll just add a slot to the right and do a side-by-side -side comparison of a second celestial map that's uh, similar but different. So there you have it. And I can zoom into both to compare um, the details on the Leo uh, component of the, of the map. And I can do some more complex layouts. So I can do a layout with one on the left and two on the right. So on the right side, I can click the, uh, the, the control to add a slot below. And now I have a slot below. And I have a one on the left, two on the right with a third, um, a third celestial map. Um, change layout, the change layout icon at the top allows you, especially on large screens, um, to go to some more sophisticated layouts by default. So I'll simply do a two by two, and here's maybe um, a nugget. Uh, I'm going to show you a, a feature uh, that's, that's, that's relatively new, and this is the ability to find a IIIF resource in another repository. So I'm now searching the digital Bodleian to see if they have any celestial maps, and I find one. Um, and I notice the IIIF icon associated with the logo. And the magic here is I can actually drag that IIIF icon over to my Mirador tab and just simply drop it into that remaining panel. No way. <laughs> Did you find it? I, I knew it was worth still doing this presentation. That's great. Um, so this is kind of a, a, a signal of, of, um, of what's to come with respect to discovery and how do I find these resources and then add them um, to, uh, to a triple IIIF compliant environment. Um, and a number of institutions are now adding not only the triple IIIF icon, but the drag and drop functionality, which works, which works in Mirador, it works in the Universal Viewer, um, and, and I imagine increasing number. Uh, so that's drag and drop. Um, and uh, lastly, I want to do a quick demo of the annotation functions, which Mike Appleby uh, uh, alluded to but did not demonstrate. Um, and uh, the, this enhanced level of annotation functionality has been inspired and driven in large part by the conservation space and research space projects, but, um, but is, is, is attractive for many different use cases. So this is a beautiful Japanese um, a souvenir print that we've recently digitized a collection of at Stanford, and I'm able to draw a circle around the face of the small boy riding, um, riding a bicycle. So we have the ability to create rectangles, circles, freehand, polygons. I'll, uh, I notice a, a, a mountain in the background, a volcano in the background, that maybe that's Mount Fuji. So I'm not quite sure, but I'll create a rectangular annotation and ask the question, is this Mount Fuji? Um, and now I've got uh, two simple annotations um, on this image. 
and I toggle off and on the annotation feature and I can see those, those annotations revealed. Um, luckily, I was able to find another image of Mount Fuji uh, complements uh, through uh, the Internet Archive, um, which is, is, is IIIF compliant, uh, courtesy of the Brooklyn Museum. Is the Brooklyn Museum in the house? So thank you for this. I was able to um, open uh, a different image of Mount Fuji uh, from the Inner Archive, and I'm going to make this annotation a little bit differently. I'll use the freehand tool and see if I can actually trace the outline of the mountain, just to kind of demonstrate the power of the freehand tool. And I'm, no, I'm actually not, not really doing it, just to say, in case you're wondering. I know I'm concentrating very hard to make sure it actually works the way it worked last night when I made the video. Um, in addition to a text annotation, uh, again, we can annotate IIIF compliant images with other media. So I found a real picture of Mount Fuji on Wikipedia, um, and I have the URL in the clipboard. So I can now create an annotation by pasting the URL source of that image. Um, I'll lessen the dimensions to make it look uh, a little bit more reasonable on the screen. And now I've got a uh, freehand annotation of Mount Fuji with um, a comment as well as uh, an image. Um, so um, these, uh, these new annotation features uh, that the team uh, has built and integrate, integrated over the past uh, few weeks, in fact, um, really show you the power of comparison plus annotation of images from disparate repositories. So uh, as we've alluded to, right now the production version of Mirador uh, is 2.0, um, but the, the, the team is, is aspiring to add, to, to release 2.1 this summer, um, which will kind of notably highlight these enhanced annotation features. I think a virtual ruler that'll give you a sense of size of the object as you zoom in and out, the ruler scale will change, some brightness and contrast controls, um, the ability to do detail images and layers, uh, similar to the, the demonstration that, um, that uh, uh, Regis gave uh, of the, um, the, the, the Grand Chronicle of France, um, but in Mirador, um, the ability to toggle easily within Mirador between images that were taken of the same object with different types of photography technologies, so choosing different in instances of images. Uh, and then not too far down the road, um, some features to keep a pace with the IIIF APIs um, that are emerging, the IIIF standards that are emerging. So search within, authentication, and then there's a healthy appetite for tools integrated into Mirador that enable the creation of transcriptions and translations to display side by side with the images. Um, so we've got some designs for that, and uh, I hope to see that coming soon, in addition to um, lots of other Lots of other features, so long as the community keeps, keeps developing. So lots of different uses of Mirador. We've seen many of them today, um, and several that aren't on this list, so I won't rehash them. Um, and I'll simply close and pass it off to, uh, to Tom with an invitation to come check us out at projectmirador.org. Um, you can uh, download it and give it a try. If you're a developer, you can contribute um, and let us know. Um, we uh, have phone calls every two weeks that are um, quite spirited and engaging. So um, we, welcome to, we welcome you to our merry clan. Um, and with that, I will say thank you and hand it off to, to Tom Crane.